Hey guys, welcome to another Phantom Friday, and it being a Phantom Friday, I thought I would let you guys know of something I have been a fan of for a very long time. As a good book reader, I have a favorite author. You guys might think you know who it is, but stay tuned and find out. Alright, so as a good book reader, I let this to one of my best friends so she could be introduced to this writer, and as a good book reader, it's in a pile somewhere with the rest of her books. So some of these books, while I have an actual physical copy, I don't have it with me right now. So my all-time favorite writer and has been for a very long time is a woman called Tamora Pierce, and if you guys have not looked her up, you really need to. Now, as you guys have probably may have guessed, I talk a lot about Harry Potter and being a Hufflepuff, and I am a proud Hufflepuff, but these books transformed me more than even the Harry Potter did. Now, I was a little girl. I was a tempestuous, wild, liked to run around, did not play with baby dolls kind of little girl, liked to play in mud, liked to climb trees. I was not the normal, sit, cute, frilly little girl. So her first book series, which is called The Song of the Lioness, was for me. Now, Tamora Pierce has been writing for a very long time, as I said. Her first book was actually published in 1983, which makes it older than me, which is kind of impressive. I did not find her until middle school. So it's kind of sad, but I've never been to, like, the book openings for Harry Potter or any of the cool stuff. I've tried to get into fandoms here and there. This one has never seemed to have a fandom, and it's it sucks because these books are amazing and any good reader should have read these at least once, especially females, because these are books written for girls to make girls feel like heroes. So like I said, the first section of books, and she has different sections of books, is called The Song of the Lioness. This is about a little girl who has a twin brother and wants to be a knight. She wants to go into battle. She wants to defend her country. She wants to be wild and at this time period, it is set in the Middle Ages, she is supposed to be a lady, which means learning how to dance, learning how to sew, wearing dresses. This was just not her thing. The very first book is called Alana, and it's the first adventure. And so it's a set of four books where we follow Alana through her quest. Will she make it to a knight? She actually has to hide herself while she's training to be a knight because they will not allow females in this world to go into knighthood. So she has to actually hide who she is and learn how to be a boy. And it tells you all the different things of her friends that she meets along the way. She makes friends with the prince of the realm. She makes friends with all these guys who really like to get to know her. And they've become really close friends. Of course, there's always a villain. So there's somebody trying to take over the country. She has a best friend who is a little boy well, little. He's a teenager in the city who is the king of thieves, and you get to learn what happens. Does she get her shield? What happens if she gets her shield? Does she have to reveal who she is at some point? Because obviously you can't be a female knight hiding as a guy. But these four books really develop this character so well, where you learn this girl who is scared of her part of herself grow into a well-functioning member of this society and part of it is she has a magic called the gift which certain members of this community have and she has to learn to accept it because she actually fears this part of her and she has to learn to accept it and through different relationships she actually sh sees what happens when you try to hide from yourself and hide parts of you that you don't like or don't care for so for me as a middle school girl this was a very important book series to show me that I could be me, even if I was a little quirky, even if I was a little weird. Most of y'all don't know, um, we moved a lot when I was little, and when I say a lot, I mean I think the count was 20 before I got to college, so a lot. Being the constant new kid and being a little odd, it was kind of nice to have someone who was also odd be able to fit in somewhere. Now, her second quartet is called the Immortal series, and it's about a totally different girl. When she went to go revisit this world again, she found Dane, and Dane has a special connection to nature, which always intrigued me. 
she has a special thing called wild magic. So it's not the gift that we saw in the first quartet. She has this special connection with animals and can talk to them and change and do all kinds of things. In this series, you really learn who she is and what her parentage was, because yes, that is a secret why she is the way she is and it again there's a villain he's trying to take over the country and she learns to find herself and acceptance in a new world after tragedy so this was also a really good series and one of my favorites all right so our third quartet is about the next girl who wants to be a knight at this point the prince that alana knew has become king oops spoilers and so there's another girl who wants to be a knight it, the rule has since been changed. So she is physically and legally allowed to be in the army, but it is as she is the first person to actually physically join the army as a girl. We're going through her struggles. What's it like being the only girl in an academy of boys? So think a girl going off to military school. She is a big, burly girl who wants to be a knight. She wants to defend. She wants to protect. And for many, many years, she heard she would never get married. So this, she has to deal with who she is and all these things that people are saying about her. Again, it's been kind of interesting because this series, while it didn't trigger as much um, emotion in me, was still really good. Because um, Calandri, who's in this series, her family is actually military, so they moved to, they had lived in a foreign country and not in the base country of Tortal. And so she has to come back and she has all these things where she's not quite the nationality she should be, but has these strange quirks. And again, like I said, my parents are actually missionaries. They're not military, but we did move a lot. So being a third culture kid where you're legally one nationality, but you were raised in another one, you kind of create this third kind of mixture. So you guys may have noticed I'm a little quirky. That's what it is. I have a lot of things that came from the various countries I lived in. And so this one was kind of nice to see someone accept who they are and being able to use it because as it came, the crown prince in this series is now being, uh, has an arranged marriage with the princess of the nation her dad was an ambassador for. So she's able to use this knowledge and really be able, an asset to the crown prince, who's of course her friend in this series. And of course, there is a war where someone's trying to take over their country, and it all makes things very complicated, but it's actually interesting. And for this one, was intriguing. This is the first quartet of hers where there is no actual love interest, which is kind of interesting. She is just one of the guys, which is kind of nice. Alrighty, the next set is actually only two books, but they are my favorite so far in all of her series. They are called Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. Now, this girl is about Aliana, and she is a prankster. She also is a spy, or her parents were spies, and so she is, of course, in the whole government of Tortal. So she is raised to be a spy, but her parents want her to behave, and it's just not happening. So at the very beginning, you learn she actually gets captured and sold as a slave into a foreign country, and she has to use her wits and her quirkiness and everything she's learned to help them. Um, one of the things in this, there is a pantheon of gods in this book series. So gods are very invested, kind of like the old Greek gods, are very invested in the mortals' lives and can use certain mortals to help their things along. So this is Aliana's fate. She is doomed or blessed, however you want to see it, to help one of the gods take over his area again. And she has to help her family, her new family that she serves under succeed at what they're trying to do and honestly it's one of my favorites um mostly because you learn a whole new species uh the crows are supposedly a special people group like there are people groups that are related to crows so crows can become humans and so one of the characters in this book is actually a crow who decides to be human and hangs out with her and he's just a really quirky guy and just really funny to watch now, through all of these books, it is a really funny, sassy, sarcastic storytelling. So it's one that really appeals to me because every so often you just get these phrases and you're like laughing for no apparent reason. It drives my husband crazy because he doesn't know what I'm laughing about. But usually he can see that I have a book in my hand.
All right, the next one is a trilogy, and these ones are the Becca Cooper trilogy, and they are three books. Now, this is actually interesting because, as I mentioned with the Alana books, the very first series in The Song of the Linus, George Cooper is the King of the Thieves, and this series is actually his great-grandmother, I believe. It's either his grandmother or his great-grandmother. So she was actually a part of the police force in the area he is now king of the thieves it's actually his mother telling her about his ancestors hoping he will fall into line I, it didn't work but you learn about becca cooper who only wants to be a police officer and keep people safe and really go she goes into the lowest area the basically the ghetto of this community trying to keep the peace and trying to keep people safe and it's a really interesting story with twists and turns and people on her side and then people who do betray her as well so it's all the different fightings and this one's actually been interesting i haven't been able to read this one as often like most good bookworms i read some series every year and some of these ones are much newer to me so this is one of those ones i think i've only read maybe four times so the plot's not as ingrained in my head the newer series she's working is called abyss and slaughter and it is about Numar Semerlin, Semerlin, sorry, as most of these stories are on paper, there is no actual pronunciation guide. So it's one of those things where you have the names in your head. Now he is found in the Immortal series, and I'm not going to give too much away. Basically, he is the most powerful sorcerer in all of Tortal. He is what's known as a black robe and is extremely powerful. But this is the beginning of his story. So this is back when he was in school many, many years ago, where he is learning all of his trade, and you find that he is actually one of those people that had had a natural feel for the gift, which is probably how he got so powerful. And it's interesting to read, because as you read through this first book, and there's going to be more to come, he, he's really quirky, and he's really intelligent. So it's one of those kids that absolutely has gifted syndrome, and you can see how bored he is when he's in the beginning lower level classes and how fast he advances. So it's kind of nice to see someone who is intelligent and bookish and he learns so much. And of course he makes friends, he has all kinds of adventures and he has to fight the powers that are trying to take over the country that he is in because this is actually not set in Tortal. This is in the country south of them, which I think is Karthak. So it is interesting to be in another place, both the the two books with Aliana and these books are set outside of Tortal, which is kind of nice because usually you're set in this one little area. So I'm really excited. I'm still waiting for the next book in this series. I don't know when it's due. They won't tell me. But this one is really cool. It's also the first book written uh, that I've read from a guy's perspective. So far, all of our books have been female based, which is nice because you always need those girls to look up to. But this one's kind of interesting just to look behind some of the other characters within the story. Real quick, the last one I'm going to talk about, at least about Tortal, is called Tortal, A Spy's Guide. And I haven't read this one yet, so I am super excited and I might have to go buy it on Amazon just so I can read it. Because I have so many extra books for like Harry Potter. I actually haven't gone all the way into some of these books. This one looks intriguing um, without too many spoilers. The spy master has a whole bunch of stuff that he tells Aliana. And I'm trying very hard to skip some spoilers so you guys actually read these books. But I'm intrigued to see this because some of the excerpts from a spy's guide are in Aliana's book. They actually put them at the beginning of the chapters. You can see entries from people she knows, like letters or messages or books she received at certain points of time. So it's actually kind of cool that she wrote out the book. So I can actually go back and see what the whole books. All right. So I wouldn't be a good reviewer if I didn't tell you about the other series she has. I have not personally read this one. I have tried it a little bit. I think it might be a different audience. I don't know. This is called The Circle of Magic, and I can't tell you a whole lot about it because I have not read them. But I'm guessing it's all people the um, with a certain magic abilities. Now, this is not set in Tortal, which is probably why I didn't get pulled into it as fast. But... I may have to start these sometimes just to see how good they are. Alrighty guys, so that's all I have for this week. Make sure you check out her website. I will put a link in below. It is really worth the read, especially if you have little girls. I'm going to get my mini to read it at some point, probably a little bit closer to middle school as there are some things in it that I'm not sure an eight year old needs to know yet. But just, it's not explicit. It's just 
more than I've explained to my eight year old. So let me know what you think. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all the good things. And I will see you guys next Fandom Friday. Bye.